Good morning, good afternoon to everyone, and we appreciate the time this uh, this afternoon here. Um, so again, my name is Simon Volta, and I'm the Regional Account Director here at V Technologies. Uh, I'm going to take you all through a very short presentation here uh, before I uh, turn this over to Jason um, on my team, who's going to take everyone through a very short demonstration of Starship and the McCola integration. Um, and again, like Megan said, if there's any questions, please put those into the chat so we can get those here at the end. <clears throat> so um, we appreciate um, all the business over the years uh, with Shipgear. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to everyone on the call thus far uh, for being uh, loyal to our Shipgear product. As many of you are aware, we have the, decided to sunset that product at the end of 2023. Uh, and now here we are talking about our Starship cloud solution and what we can migrate you to uh, to take advantage of the new technology and the new uh, solution that is out there. Okay, so I'm going to get started here. Um, second, okay. So um, what uh, are some of your shipping challenges, right? So as we look at how we can address some of the uh, more advanced um, needs and challenges that customers uh, have today uh, in their um, in operation. Um, we look at a few things, you know, things like, you know, how many websites, you know, do I need to log in to process shipments? So many of you and all of you are using Shipgear today, uh, and that's what you brought you here. Uh, but you may also be using other applications outside of Shipgear and WorldShip or Ship Manager, things like Post Office, things like LTL platforms. That you might be going to different websites to rate shop. Um, your LTL and um, uh, in your pallets uh, that you might be doing today. So those are things that Starship can potentially address, and we'll talk more about that as well as we go through the presentation. Um, LTL shipments, there's got to be an easier way to manage. When we talk to a Shipgear user today, many Shipgear users have a need, uh, small or big, uh, where they're shipping, you know, either from a few pallets a day to many pallets a day or a week. Um, and they are going to multiple sites and they're spending a lot of time um, getting a rate quote, processing a bill of lading, things like that. Um, and again, Starship has that capability of loading those various carriers uh, into its application, allowing you to do in, um, all of that process and streamline that entire process for you so you can go to one place and not have to worry about five or six different portals. Again, you must, you know, manually update McCola, right? So some of you are using Shipgear, which is great, but again, if you're using any other applications to ship outside of Shipgear that's not automated, someone has to take that paper trail and bring it into the front office to update McCola with the right information. That could be very time consuming. Again, a need that uh, we'll address here with Starship. Um, shipping costs too high. Whenever you're trying to rate shop manually with between applications, even between say FedEx and UPS, you are always having to be forced to go to different applications and get those rate quotes. Uh, Starship having one screenshot, and Jason will take you through this here in a moment, um, but seeing all of those rates together uh, and having that capability allows you to pick the most effective rate uh, for that specific shipping lane. So again, as we already spoke about, we can solve a lot of these different challenges with our solution here. Um, so just to give everyone kind of a quick rundown of V Technologies uh, and how this um, all came to be. Um, so uh, for those of you who don't know, V Tech itself was founded back in 1987. Um, Starship is not a new product by any means. Starship has been around as our flagship product since 1989. Um, it's been around for 30 plus years. Um, obviously, it's been running on the on-premise version um, for all these years and still is running on-premise. However, back three years ago, we launched our cloud solution for Starship, which kind of really has launched itself over the last few years um, and really where customers are starting to adapt to more of a cloud strategy. Um, so now we're seeing a lot of customers take um, and adopting that product. So um, again, 35 plus years doing what we do. Um, we were just uh, recognized by UPS this past year um, as a premier partner, uh, which is a very um, rewarding <laughs> um, recognition for us uh, being a top partner of theirs for the last year. Um, and we, are, we work really closely with that team in, in supporting them um, with their digital connection program, along with making sure our APIs are, are pretty strong with them as well. Um, we have 17 plus years in the McCola space, 
Um, we started with McCullough back in 2005, uh, developing the plug and play connectors. So again, everything we're about to show you, again, it's all plug and play. There's no customizations or anything like that that we need to be worried about. Um, so again, you don't um, have a need for you know, custom development or anything like that. So when we look at Starship and kind of really the main features and what we're gonna you know, offer to all of you here by moving over is really this multi-carrier strategy. Number one, we already talked about it, star sh or rate shopping. Um, having the ability to live rate shop in the environment one place um, is really key to a lot of users. And I think you'll see that here in a demonstration coming up. Best way rules. Um, again, being able to set various rules of how you like to um, ship a particular package, ship a particular pallet. Um, you can set up various rules uh, based on transit time, based on weight, um, you name it, we can set up those rules for you within the application. Um, parcel and LTL shipping in one place. I think I've already talked about that multiple times, right? Having that ability to go to one place and be able to see that those rates and be able to get all your documentation needed. Metrics, um, again, having a full dashboard available to you to get all of the information you need from address corrections, late deliveries, um, maybe you want to see what you're quoting your customer versus what the carrier is quoting you to get maybe a variance report um, to make sure you're not losing money in shipping. So again, you have the ability to running various reports, looking at a distribution map um, as well, which I'll, I think I have a slide here coming up to show you that. But again, giving you all of those metrics that needed um, that you need to have better negotiations with your carriers. And then just you know really improving the processing efficiencies, right? So that's what we're trying to do is not have you go to multiple platforms, go to one place, have everything in front of you to really streamline and get those products out the door as quickly as possible. Starship does come with a fully customizable interface. So you know um, not every user has to have the same look and feel to it. Um, you have the ability of customizing the UI and, and making you know certain columns appear, maybe hiding certain. Uh, columns you don't want to see in the UI. Um, so it's really up to you as a user what you want to see uh, in your environment. Um, one of the main differences that you will see in Starship is we take in all the line items um, from McCola into Starship. Um, so the items are very key to us, especially when we talk to you about international shipping, processing your commercial documentation. We store your HTS codes, Schedule B numbers, commercial invoice, all of those um, pieces are stored at the item level, along with your bill of lading. So things like NMFC or groups, class, all of those items are stored at the item level so we can uh, put those onto the right documentation for you. Uh, and then hazmat, if anyone is shipping hazardous today, um, we have the ability of producing like hazardous documents. So therefore, um, you know, we have hazmat profiles that we can set up at the item level. So again, that's the reason we pull those in. Um, so we have the ability of storing that one time and we never touch it again and it's just there. So it just prints. Um, so you don't have to do that over and over again. Um, drop shipping. Many of you may be drop shippers on here. So again, we can simplify your drop shipping need uh, by having different sender IDs show up on the on the labels, on the bill of lading if you prefer. Um, so that way you don't have to again type in information manually. Um, we have different sender IDs that we can set accordingly based on your dropship profiles. Um, and then consolidating of orders. If you are consolidating of orders into one master shipment, again, we can help you do that. Uh, and then delivering that tracking information back to the specific orders inside of Macola as well. When we talk about in the cloud, right, obviously we started this transition process, as I mentioned, three, you know, roughly three, four years ago, we started development work back in 2016 on the cloud solution. Um, knowing where the industry was headed, uh, but really Starship is always on your latest in, uh, version. Um, we never have to get an IT team involved. We never have to worry about manually upgrading Starship now. It's always in the latest version, always taking advantage of the latest features that has been put into the product. Um, it does give you access to unlimited users, um, as well as all of our carriers that we support in our portfolio. Um, we manage the seasonality um, well, um, especially with the various tier, different tiers of pricing that we offer. Um, so you all have uh, access to that. So you can drop your plan in slow times, you can increase your volume in, in peak times. So really up to you how you wanna manage your pricing. And then restricting access to certain users. Um, so again, you may wanna give the shipper 
certain access versus someone in the front office versus the administrator. Really up to the administrator of how they want to uh, set specific permissions within the um, application itself. This just gives you a very quick overview of the various carries we support for our, uh, all of our parcel as well as LTL options, including some three PLs that we support as well. So again, if any of these apply in your environment today, please let Jason or Will know here on my team. Um, they are here to help you talk about those integrations. Uh, if there's someone that's not on this list, not to say we can't help you, um, we definitely have options that we can talk through as well uh, with you on that. This just gives you a view of our dashboard, as I mentioned a moment ago. Um, so just to give you a visual on this, but just really quick, um, you have there a heat map or a distribution map on the right, um, showing you all the hot zones where you're shipping product to. Um, so in this example, you see the Eastern half of my the country, I'm shipping a lot of volume through versus the Western half, it's kind of sporadic and there's some open spots. So again, we can show you this in your own environment um, again, it helps with negotiations, it helps with expansion. Um, so again, very, very, um, uh, you know, involved data that goes into this um, for all of you to make those decisions that are needed from a business standpoint. Um, and then there on the left, you see kind of various charts that you can run just to kind of get a feel of what's going on from a package volume, LTL volume, uh, maybe your cost are up or down. So again, a quick visual to give you kind of that insight that you, know, you might be uh, interested in looking at. So a um, couple additional things I just wanna mention um, as we are approaching that deadline of uh, you know, December in 2023, um, really when we talk about the risk for all of you to remain on ship gear, um, so some of you already might be you know, thinking about moving to Starship, some of you maybe haven't started that thought process yet, um, which is fine. Uh, but we just want to bring to you know your awareness since we have you kind of what's going on here so as you see on this slide number one to keep in mind is there is no additional bug fixes or enhancements being made to this product um, and that's ship gear um, so if something were to go awry from now until december um, that does need a developer to get involved to fix unfortunately there are you know no more developers to work on this product all of our developers are working on our starship solution only to make that a better product for everyone here um, so keep that in mind um, the last version of ship gear was published and released um, that is version 12 um, that which just came out to support the latest world ship version of um, for 2023 so if you haven't taken that please do so ship gear can continue to work for you but that will be the last version of ship gear um going forward so again as long as they don't make any more updates from now until the end of the year everyone will be fine however once they release their new version that's when you'll need the new ship gear version which will not be available um, again no additional ship gear releases will be available there as i mentioned um, everyone here got the notice about the pricing for ship gear increase back i think it was october-ish time frame um, so everyone's been paying obviously higher fees um, or limited integration, when I say limited, meaning it only can support parcel carriers um, and then also no additional enhancements. So it's really on its last leg um, here. So you might as well, for the very little cost differential, um, jump into a product with all of our developers and enhancements being put into it. Promotional pricing uh, may not be available the second half of the year. Right now we have some great promotions, which we'll talk about at the end um, going on that may be pulled away second half of the year because of our backlog that we fully expect. And that kind of leads me here um, to the last bullet point, very long wait times to be you know, onboarded to Starship if we wait till the end to migrate. Um, we fully expect by July, August timeframe um, that we may have uh, several months of backlog uh, because right now we do have 2000 plus customers still running on the application. Um, so again, we wanna make sure that Everyone is aware of that. Um, we cannot expedite anybody. If you call us in October or November um, to tell us, hey, we wanna to go to Starship, you're just gonna to have to wait in the queue, unfortunately, um, and wait the turn that everyone else has been waiting for. So spots are filling up quickly, um, but again, just keep that in mind. Um, and then again, right now, um, why act now? Right now we have a 35% off, right? Um, for uh, the first year of subscription, 
Uh, we do have an offer for multi-years. Some customers have asked for, if I buy three years of Starship, what can I get? We do have that as well. If you want to do that, we offer 25% off of each year um, for a multiple year contract. So um, with that being said, I am going to turn this now to Jason to kind of give us a quick overview of Starship, and then we'll open it up for any questions. So Jason, the screen is yours. Thanks, Simon. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Jason. <clears throat> so what I have up here is going to be Starship, and this is going to be your home screen. What this is going to show is all your available orders that are ready to be shipped. Um, let me move that. All your available orders that are ready to be shipped. So there's a couple of different ways you can go to this list from what you see here. We have you can filter on any of these columns up above. Filter on any of these columns up above. Um, you can add filters up top. Maybe you want to put in a date range and only see invoices from those dates. Or you can come up here and type in your invoice or sales order number, and it will populate right to the top of the screen. In my example here, I have the 7879. This is a sales order I already created within Macora. Um, when I create that sales order, Starship automatically pulls it in and puts it in this wrist here. So now that I do find the order that I want to process, my first step is going to be hitting this truck icon here. And what you will notice is that all that information on that sales order is appearing here on one screen for you. So a couple of things just to cross reference up top. We have our source. This is going to be where the order came from. So I can double check. Yes, it's 7879. That's the order I'm intending to process. Next, we have our sender ID. This is going to read where the package is coming from. As Simon mentioned, we do support drop shipping or blind shipment. So if you needed to set up another company or another address within here for it to read where the package is coming from, that's something we can certainly support. Next, under recipient, we, this green check mark here, this is going to be an address validation. We utilize the post office's system. So any information they have, we have. So we're going to let you know if this address is correct to help you cut back on any address correction fees. And then we're also going to let you know if it's a residential or a business, and if that business has a rolling dock. So all of this information will populate right here for you. Next. If you look at transportation, since I put down that my ship via is UPS ground, I had Starship automatically automatically translate to my UPS ground account here. So you can see everything's pre-filled. If I jump in, you'll be able to see that you are able to change it at any point if you wish. We also do support third-party billing or correct shipments. So we can search this to right here, and then we can store your customer account information within here if you wanted to ship on their account. If we go inside shipment details, within here you'll be able to see any additional feature that you can toggle on for that shipment. Anything you, within here, you can toggle these to automatically be on, maybe automatically be on per customer. So just have the shipper come in here and click these on and off as they see fit. If we jump into packaging, you notice I have two items on this order, my brake character and my adventure bike. I have each item packed inside a drill case. Now the drill case was a package I already saved within Starship, and so that way I don't have to type in any of the dimensions. It's already pre-filled. We do allow you to create a packaging database, so there'll be a drop-down where you can see all your different uh, packages that are pre-set up. And then if we jump into Ryan items, so within here, this is where we keep all that information to correspond with each item. This is especially applicable for those LTL shipments as we store the NMFC, the group, or the crash, and then automatically place that on the BOL. All for those international orders, we'll automatically store the Schedule B code to associate with that item, so you don't have to manually input that information either. 
And then as Simon mentioned on the call earlier today, we have our rate shop. So what you see here is if you hit the shop all button, Starship will make an API call to all your negotiated rates on your license. So this is where you can see the total business days, the total days, and the total cost for UPS to take this shipment. I can switch this at any time. If the package is heavy enough and you decide to prioritize it, you also have the option of utilizing LTL carriers, which is what you see at the bottom of the screen. Now, with Starship, we also allow you to mark up your freight if you wish. So that is gonna be the difference between the contract and the applied charges. In my example here, I have a 10% markup across the board. And then in my example, I'm gonna have Starship write back the 123, which is including the markup, back to my sales order within Macora for me to pass that off to my customer. But if everything looks good as a shipper, you just hit ship and process. What this does is it's going to generate the label for you, for you to place on each package, and then also write back all that information into Macora, so that way you have that recorded. And this is going to be a glimpse of the label. This is called our smart label. So what that means is that the packing list and the uh, the packing list and the label appear on the same document. You can certainly take advantage of it this way. However, you do have the option of printing these out to different printers if you would like on separate documents. From there, I'm gonna jump into Macora to showcase the right back. So if I open up that same order I process, Starship writes back into two, two locations within the order. The first one is gonna be the header comments. So if I jump into here, you'll see all this information was automatically written back as I process that shipment. We have the ship date, the estimated delivery date, the carrier. We have the tracking information, the rate, the items that were shipped. All that information would be placed right here. And then if we go into our billing section, this is where we see the freight right back, written back. So you have the total freight cost, and then you have your total cost down below. Then just to jump back into Starship, I can give you a glimpse of our dashboard. So as Simon mentioned, one of the things we do provide you is going to be a heat map. So as you can see, I can see my most populous shipping areas across the United States. I can update this and change the time frame, maybe change the carrier. So you can put filters on what type of information you want to see. We also add additional graphs on the right hand side. Just a nice, quick, easy way to see your total shipment and your total cost. We have additional reports that can be exported out of Starship right in here. So anything you see within here can be created a report and exported out. And then last but not least, we have our e-notify tool. So a common occurrence for most companies is now that we send out our package, how do we get the tracking information to our customer? So Starship offers an e-notify tool, which is essentially an automated email that gets sent out to your customer. It is a template, so you can customize this how you see fit. You can throw your company header up top. If you have a website, you can put the website down at the bottom. Uh, most importantly, it's going to contain a tracking number, which is what you see here. And then when your customer receives this email, they can click on this hyperlink and it'll redirect them directly to the carrier's web page for them to track their own shipments. So that's Starship. That's all I have to show for you. Take care.